Shoot the Breeze topic number one says a Haitian national on U.S. imperialism in her country and Kenya's role in it. Let's uh, this takes us to Twitter. It looks like. Let's go to Twitter here. Um, so this is from Ms. Alendo, the Lisi Foundation. It's, uh, it, it has the same title that I just read, a Haitian national on U.S. imperialism in her country and Kenya's role in it. It's about a four, almost a five-minute video. What we'll do is we'll watch it. Let me make sure it's right. We'll watch it and then we'll comment. What we have is the U.S. has been wanting. One of the key things to understand is that I'm not sure people know that Haiti is the first free black republic in the world 223 years. And because of that history, because of defeating Napoleon and defeating the West, it's been paying for that. It, this isn't what we call it. And so the past 20 years after the deposing of our president, the U.S. has complete control through the U.N. apparatus and its other minions, France and Canada, over Haitian politics. So by the time we get to Kenya's involvement in Haiti, what we have is the U.S. had been wanting to have a military presence in Haiti for a very long time. They wanted a military base from the 1800s. But in 2022, when there were government protests against IMF, um, um, removal of subsidies against U.S. imperial meddling, constant imperial meddling, what ended up happening was that the U.S. wanted to find a force, a similar military force, to support its puppet that it had in place in 2022. When the puppet, when, when the Security Council, when China and Russia refused sending a military force saying this is, you know, this is not a civil war, there's nothing, there's no civil war going on in Haiti, the U.S. then settles for this multinational mission, which I have to remind people is not a U.N. mission, it's, it's, it's sanctioned by the UN, but it's a US paid mission, which effectively means that the US is paying mercenaries to go to Haiti to establish its military base. And so in fact, the Kenyans are warm bodies for US imperialism, warm bodies as the US expand its physical presence in Haiti and establish a base as it prepares to go to war with China. And what people don't understand is that Haiti is in the trade winds area, lo geographically located there. The U.S. wants to use that presence there, not only to go against the leftist governments in, in Latin America, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba, but to also establish a place where its boats can go through Haiti, if it has a military presence there, go through the Panama Canal, and go hit China when, it's, when the time comes. So Kenya comes into this place in the middle of U.S. imperial machinations in the region, and they're being used as a proxy service for U.S. imperial role in, in, in the area. And if, if, and if that, that itself is a problem because Haiti is not um, at a civil war, but the, because the West controls the media apparatus, as you know, most of the world gets their news from Reuters, Voice of America, CNN, and BBC, right? And so when you read that, you think the worst place in the world right now is in Haiti. You think that this country is burning up in flames because they manufacture consent. When the real, reality is like these armed groups, are, there are more gangs in Chicago in the U.S. than there are in Haiti. The, the violence that you see that they, the media props up happens only in the capital city of a country that's 12 million people. The capital city has about 2 million people. When you have Mexican cartels, when you have gangs in Ecuador, when you have a genocide happening in Gaza, Everyone's saying Haiti is the problem to international community. So we have to really think about why is it that the U.S. is going through so much trouble to manufacture consent and make everyone think that Haiti is the worst place to be in order to send a military occupation when, you know, things are happening in other places of the world. And, 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 so, and, and, and they're not doing that, right? Yeah. And so what I want Kenyans to, to see is really question this, question this idea that Haiti, for example, needs military occupation. Haitians are completely against foreign military intervention because we have a long history of intervention. And so Haitians are completely against U.S. imperialism, them being used as fodder. And so Kenya comes in. And I want people to know, like, why is it that Kenya, for example, did not have bilateral relations with Haiti until last year? If Kenya, if Ruto is really serious about saying, well, we're helping our brothers and sisters, why is it it's after the U.S. asked them to 
that he decided to have bilateral relations in Haiti? Why is it that he doesn't think, well, maybe the region, there are other people in the region that can come help Haiti. Why is it that it's the US military that takes around the soldiers? Why is it that's the US paying Kenyan $600 million? This is mercenary. This is not Pan-Africanism. This is not bilateral relations. This is not, there's no legitimate government to actually even ask Kenya to bring in its force to Haiti. And we need to know what does this mean in this age of increasing multipolarity? Why allow yourself to be used as a proxy for U.S. imperialism against another black country? That was so uh, well stated. Let me just make sure there's not more to it. In fact, let me look at some of the comments. D.C. Matthew says, I am sorry to say it, but no one should pay this woman any attention. She is consumed by anti-Americanism. I keep waiting, and this is a black person, by the way, I keep waiting to hear some sort of sympathy for the Haitian suffering because of the gangs, but I never hear it. Her view is if the US is, if the US is involved, it can't be good. And the poster of this video says anti-Americanism is good. Um, One of the key things to understand. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I just would like to add that um, as uh, Buana has to do something and come back, I'll just like to add that um, sometimes I hear it, sometimes I hear it here on Shoot the Breeze, actually. I hear people say, well, I understand why uh, our folks sell drugs and stuff in the community, this, that, and the other. Well. If you understand that, then you should be sympathetic to Kenya. Because all of it is sell-out behavior. All of it is sell-out behavior and anti-African behavior, right? But I, I, I digress. I, I'm not going to go on a whole tangent there. But let me start with Black Steel. Well, first of all, let me introduce Black Steel. Black Steel, how are you this week? I'm doing good, Kaku. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks for coming through. How's the weather there? It's actually quite beautiful, man. It's like uh, probably it was like seventy degrees today, which is actually quite pleasant. Florida had a nice breeze. It was it's nice today. Good day. Good day. All right, all right. Uh, I'll come right back to you, Black Seal. Let me introduce Anthony to the panel tonight. Anthony, how are you this week? Hey, how you doing, brother? Good, good. How's hey, everything you? down there? Yes, sir. How's everything where you are? Man, it was pretty good, man. 80 degrees, man. The flood came out. <laughs> I can't complain. And good. peace to all other brothers on the family, man. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Thank you for coming through as well. Uh, let me start with Black Steel then. Black Steel, a Haitian national and U.S. imperialism in her country and Kenya's role in it. What are your thoughts about that? I mean, I can't say she's wrong. I believe, I'm, I'm glad she's connecting the dots between the invasion of, well, we'll call it, between United States using Kenya as a proxy and the uh, the, uh, the further goals of US imperialism. Uh, I'm glad she mentioned the, the uh, attack on China because the United States has what they call a pivot to Asia. And so they expect to go, they wish to go to war with, with China by the year 2030. Right, because the United States wants full spectrum dominance, which is complete control over the land, air, sea, and space. That's 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 the desire of this of the United States. They want to remain the world's sole superpower. They don't. Ever since the uh, the, the fall of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, the United States has been the, the world's sole superpower. This is the state of affairs they want to continue. So any country that could be seen as a threat to their uh, full spectrum dominance is seen as a threat and will be attacked. And they will manufacture consent to go to war with any country. So we see, you know, the build up to the war with China. Uh, and, and Haiti is a part of that. They want control over the Caribbean base and they see China influencing economically a lot of Caribbean countries. They can't have that. So the desire is to uh, subjugate Haiti, which, you know, it's always been a part of the desire to keep ha Haiti pliant, 
right? They're going to keep the people they want in charge. They're going to have the forces they need to have in, in the country and to keep the people oppressed and struggling. So that's, but the thing is, the optics look bad. You know, Haiti has been suffering from outside intervention for centuries. So the United States wishes to appear to be somewhat benevolent. So instead of them doing it, they get their proxy, which is Kenya, to do the dirty work for them. So you look like you have a black nation helping out another black nation, you know, air quotes, pan-Africanism. When reality, the Kenyans function as, as the as the lapdog of the United States because they're very much tied to the U.S. economically, militarily. How many U.S. military bases are in Kenya? How many treaties and deals do the U.S. have with Kenya? And, you know, we speak very positively about what's going on in Mali and Burkina Faso. But when they removed the drone base from, I believe it was uh, Burkina Faso, the U.S. just moved the drone base to, to I think, it was Ivory Coast. So because they have so many of these different countries that are beholden to the U.S. being be rather economically and militarily, their, their function is to basically surround China, just like what they're doing with Russia. That's what the whole invasion of Ukraine is about. The, the idea is to surround um, Russia with, with, with uh, countries that are friendly to the United States, countries that are part of NATO as a way to block them off. That's what they're doing with the Middle East. And the idea is to keep China, which is they feel is their number one threat, as a, uh, as a, as a rising country, keep them isolated, keep them separated to prepare for war. Unfortunately, this is a war that could engulf and could destroy all of humanity. All right? These are two nuclear powers. And the thing about nukes is you don't use nukes because you could kill everybody. And, they, and they're well aware of the potential for global destruction. But they would rather destroy the world than let another country each reach their level. But, but going back to Haiti, you have to feel for the Haitian people, right? And also, too, you have to feel for the Kenyan people. The people of Kenya do not want this. I want that to be clear. The Kenyans are not supporting this military intervention being done on behalf of their nation. This is being done by their president, by their leaders who do not represent the will of the Kenyan people. They they have and the thing is that this their leader, their president, I think his name Ruto, he has in a sense ignored the will of his, of the Kenyan people, but they did not vote for it. I don't think they took a vote or a referendum on this decision. He just decided because he's in the pocket of the U.S. Many times, it's not the Kenya people themselves, but it's their leaders that are causing the problem. So looking at it like that, I feel like overall, this is something that is a problem because the European white people can, America, can weaponize our own African people against us via their proxies. And it's going to take a lot of Torre, you know, the president of Burkina Faso, it's going to take a lot of brothers like him to, to organize and turn this thing around. I'll leave it there. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, Black. my computer's active. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate that, uh, Black Steel. Let me hear from um, um, Anthony next on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you hear me, Coco? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I know I was having a problem. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I pretty much agree with everything you know, uh Black Steel said, man. I mean, you know, he pretty much covered it. And uh, yeah, because and especially that part about the Kenyan people just not being the will of the Kenyan people. They don't want that. I mean, they. I mean, they've actually been protesting. You know what I'm saying? Along with the uh, with the other problems that they're having in the country. But you know, I mean, when you come to when it comes to a country like Kenya, I mean, the government in Kenya, you know, they, I mean, they've been in, they've been in the back pocket of the West for ever since the independence, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we go back to uh, President Yomo Kenyatta, you know, he was a puppet, you know what I'm saying? You know, he, he presented their face as one of the grand old men of Africa and everything. And 
But you know, he was a straight puppet. Time he, time he became president, you know, he was working with them. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, and, and it, it, it's basically the same, the same people who, that's in office right now. But uh, I like what uh, Black Steel was talking about, saying about the uh, about the uh, the conflict. You know, the uh, the the conflict that uh, well, you know, the future, war, the, the potential, the potential of a war with uh, America and China. And you know, not me personally. I feel like, I mean, I agree with everything that you said, but I mean, I think, yeah, at the end of the day, I think these white folks want to live too. You know what I'm saying? That's why they're going to be no more. They pick on small countries. That's why they can go and pick on Haiti, but they go and pick on a small country like that. But you know, they ain't going to fight each other. China, Russia, ain't nothing going to fight each other because they all got the same shit and they can all kill it. Everybody can kill everybody. You know what I mean? It was, it ain't no, ain't going to be no winner. But yeah. But basically, I mean, I pretty much agree with everything Black Seal. I appreciate that, Anthony. Yeah, one of the things she mentioned that Black Seal took note of, um, and I appreciate that, is those waterways. I talked about that a long time ago when I talked about the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, those waterways around the Caribbean are super important. Uh, for America to kind of sustain itself. And that, that those waterways around Haiti, Jamaica, the Bahamas are particularly important. And she mentions Panama with the canal. That allows them to get over to, to the east, you know, pretty, pretty easily. Um, it's a very interesting concept. But I, I do agree with Anthony in that ultimately, I don't think America really wants to have that problem with a, a, a nation like China and uh, Russia and stuff like that. And like Anthony said, and I agree with him, that's why they pick on the little guy. I remember being a young a kid, actually, when um, when the U.S. Um, when the U.S. attacked Grenada. And even as a kid, I was able to look at this thing. I watched Reagan talk about it. And I was watching him show the graphics of Grenada at the time. And I'm like, wait a minute. The U.S. is going to invade that little country? Like, come on, dog. Like, like what, 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 what are we doing? What are we doing? So I, I, I agree with Anthony. They like to pick on, on little guys. And the fact, you know, they get that from the British, too. When they, when they talk about the British had defeated half of the world or whatever, the British was picking on little dudes, man. Right? Picking on, picking on little folks who didn't even know there was in a war with Britain, so-called Great Britain. You know what I mean? So it's just more of the same going on here with the U.S. and Haiti. But, you know, to tie it back to what I said earlier, we can't give a pass. And I know it's uh, Kenya's leadership. It's not the Kenyan people as a whole. But we cannot give a pass to folks who do things against uh, other black equals African people. That goes to that goes to the things that happen within our communities, within our streets, within our blocks, and that goes on an international level as well. We cannot, we cannot allow, we cannot sit quietly and let those things happen. We cannot, we cannot agree with it. We cannot go along to get along with it. Uh, in the chat, Trigger Ivy two six two plus earlier said. They also want to destabilize China internally. Tibet, uh, Taiwan, and Hong Kong are often targets. He goes on to say, African unity can, in a sense, be enemy unity, in which your enemy is unifying various black people for their interests. That's a very good point. And shout out to Brother Bukhari. I saw him with his lovely family earlier today uh, at a football game, an HBCU football game. So shout out to Brother Bukhari. Peace and Black African power to you as well. Uh, with all that said, let's hear from Buana. Buana, what are your thoughts? Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Clay? Uh, no, you're chopping up. Are you serious? This is a new, this is a new thing, man. Okay, go, go, go on ahead, brother. I'll get you the next one. I'll get you the next one. I'll try to go up on my laptop, I guess. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, you, you, you were sounding fine when you were on earlier. I don't know. What happened? No, I, but, um, the, 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 all right. 
is there any last thoughts from either Black Seal or Anthony on this topic? I just want to say, um, just thinking about this, this topic at hand, um, you said you don't think they would go to war. Um, the Russians, so back during the Cold War, right, the Russians were very afraid of the Americans. They were, they were, they thought the United States was ran by psychopaths because there were many times, there was one particular incident where the Cuban, you know, we talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis, United States uh, put nuclear, I'm sorry, not, not, but the but Russia, Soviet Union put nuclear weapons on the island of Cuba, with Cuba being only 90 miles from the uh, United States, from Florida, they basically considered this an act of war. So this this brought the world to the brink. It was the Russians who backed down. It wasn't the Americans. The Russians removed the nuclear weapons from Cuba, from the island of Cuba. And because the and the reason that's so important is because the closer you are to that country, the lower your response time. So say they shoot a nuke from say Brazil, right? You probably got about seven, ten minutes to get in the cover, right? You shoot a nuke from Cuba, you got like a minute or two before you can. You can't really respond well enough. That's the same issue that the Russians have with Ukraine. Ukraine is so close to their border. Any nuclear missiles fired from Ukraine, it, it reduces the. Um, it was the. Uh, reduces the turn the time that uh you have to respond to the attack so i really do think that i don't want to estimate the psychotic nature of the united states i truly believe they would rather destroy the world than than allow another country to take over or to hold the same status as them haiti unfortunately is a pawn but also too haiti is a vic not so much a victim, but they have been caught in the crossfire between the so-called great powers. And because one, because of Haiti's strategic location, and two, because of what Haiti represents, which is the first uh black republic in in the Western Hemisphere, the first African nation or black nation to free themselves through from the yoke of, of slavery and imperialism. And Haiti is an example to the rest of the black world. This is something that they cannot stand. You mentioned the, the invasion of Grenada. Grenada is not really strategically important in the scheme of things, but it's what Grenada represented. Grenada was a, was a, was a country that had a socialist economy, but the majority black nation, and it was doing well. And the one thing the US hates is the threat of a good example. That's the reason why Cuba is embargoed. That's the reason why Venezuela has sanctions. That's the reason that Grenada was invaded, because the very idea of a good example to show that there is an alternative to what the West offers. They can't have that. And Haiti represents that. And many and, and I wouldn't be surprised if the, um, the organization of Sahel states is going to come under more attack. We already see Africa stream being taken off. We see the fourth. I, I, I hate to, you know, be all moralistic. It's called evil, but we see the forces of evil are are, you know, consolidating their power. They're trying to end all dissent, and I think that if we don't do the same level of organizing we have to do, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. I I agree with everything you said. I I I'm, I, I'm going to come to you next. I agree with everything. You said, but in my memory, it was uh, like Jose is saying, he said the USA is the one that backed down from Turkey. But um, Jose, you're free to come up if you want to before I move on to the next prompt. In the meantime, though, uh, let me hear from Anthony. Anthony, what's up? Yeah, hey, yeah, Coco. That's what I wanted to, I wanted to uh, touch on real quick. First, I just want to also say, you know, today, October the 19th, this was the day that I ancestor Maurice Bishop. You no, know, was assassinated too. You know, I just wanted to mention yeah, that. That's, 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 that's my shout out. Hey, and also, yeah, and, hey, and also uh, some more of Michelle in Mozambique too. And he, he was uh, he was killed in 
on October 19, 1986, three years later. But uh, what I wanted to say uh, uh, about what Brother Black Steel was saying, they, okay, I see. I actually seen this. It was a, I seen it on television where they had CIA, FBI, all these all these government officials was talking about that. For years, everybody thought that the Soviet Union had bad down, especially that commercial. You know that uh, they had this guy. What was his name? He was like a one of the American ambassadors or something. He said we. He said we were two people. We were two nations, eyeball to eyeball, and the other guy blinked. But actually, it wasn't like that. The Russians, the Soviet Union, did back down. They actually had cut a deal. It was some kind of deal that they cut with Khrushchev, and it had something to do with Germany, because you know at that time Germany was divided. You know, East Germany and West Germany, and they had the blockade on uh, Berlin and all that. But all all of the stuff tied together, and it was it was a compromise that they did. But it wasn't that the Soviet Union backed down. And I, and I seen this, which one American government officials said that they said everybody thought the, the Soviet Union did not back down from that. They made a compromise. Kennedy made a compromise with them. I just wanted to throw that in. I appreciate that. Anthony Trigger Happy 262 Plus in the chat says, keep in mind that the USSR got destabilized internally by the United States as well. Uh, he says he's no fan of any of these countries, but it's always important to have a sober geopolitical analysis. He goes on to say, it's not even just nuclear weapons. If Ukraine joins NATO, Russia will have to start working overtime protecting their border, and it would cost even more for the military. Lastly, he says, NATO growing hurts Africa, which I agree. Uh, let's let's check in with Buana again. Let's see if Buana got his sound together. Buana, what say you? Uh, Buana, you muted if you're talking. Yeah, I agree. I agree with all the brothers on the panel tonight who who made commentary, you know, um, pretty good commentary, I would say. Um, as far, far as as far as the, with the brother Fidel Castro, <laughs> Fidel Americans, and I think that. Khrushchev at the time, he was kind of like trying to back down Castro. So really in that scenario, it was it was Fidel Castro who was about that life. <laughs> he, was, he was really about that life. That's interesting. What you not only financially, but we are helping you technically in, in regards to food and aid and all these other things things so you gotta back down Castro you gotta back down because he really wanted he really wanted to press the button <laughs> you know what I mean he was that he was that kind of mad mind um in reference to, to Haiti Haiti's I always say this yeah Haiti's problem and criminal one the internal uh aspects of Haiti is causing a lot of the issues within Haiti themselves the Haitian people have to decide collectively that we're going to do something about what's happening in the country. And they have, you know, they have, if you look at Haiti's history, in all the puppets or puppet regimes, that has been set up within the, within the country of Haiti themselves, the Haitian people got rid of these leaders, this many of those leaders left uh, office running. Duvalier, uh, many others, or Haitian people sometimes take care of the leaders. Or ex hey, we uh, uh, we democratically want to elect this, but the, the people you elect, so we gonna remove him. We gonna remove a democratically elected leader, even. What I would say is Haiti's issue is an internal one, first and foremost. And I think that the Haitian government and leadership needs to get new friends. They've been having a relationship with the West for a very long time. And the Haitian government needs to get new friends and allies, whether it's with Russia or whether it's with China or some other global power, because I don't particularly agree with Black Steel when he suggests that 
America is the only superpower. No, 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 no. China is just as much as a superpower as America is. And one nuke is just as good. You could have a hundred nukes or a thousand nukes. I just need two or three, you know, and, and, and have them reach the major global centers in your economy, Washington, D.C., New York City, and California. And that's all, that's all and, and, and Washington. That's all I need is for <laughs> to reach where you are. And I could change the state of affairs in your economy just as much as you could change the, the state of affairs in mine. We don't need a, a thousand to change the world. So we are really on equal. China makes everything. They make and produce Money everything. Up, yes. And if they can't get the the mineral resources, they could just go to their friends in Africa. So they are proven itself as useful as useful you know as we have been to them you know I, we were in relationship a close relationship with England and for for years they used to call us the common you know up in Europe call England it, it, they're all they only ex extracted our mineral resources our bananas our fruits our agriculture and everything else going to England. So they became practices, the same kinds of principles and ideas. I'm saying that, um, that we need to change the relationship. We need to change that paradigm and dynamic. It really needs to happen. You know, too sweet. As far as this particular lady, Miss Pierre has said some things that I I, about the Bahamas, by the way. That Hold on. Is Buana chopping up or is it my computer? It's Buana chopping up. Hey, I can hear you just fine. Yeah, Buana, you're, you're chopping up a bit. Um, if you could go and come back in, that would be great. I was curious to hear what she was going to say about what she said about the Bahamas, but your sound is it, it has clarity for a few seconds and it'll chop. Uh, so if you could fix that, I'll be great. In the chat, uh, Jose says NGO and small hat families owning their ports are rarely mentioned. That's true, too. Uh, talking about Haiti, uh, Trigger Ivy 26 Suplus agrees with uh, Black Steel. He said America is the only superpower. China is an emerging power that is surrounded by United States allies and military bases. Russia is right next to NATO, which is American allies. Um, I wish Buana's sound wasn't chopping up so much. Uh, but between Black Steel and, and, and Anthony, do you guys have any last thoughts on this prompt? Hold on. Buana might no, be back. Let's see. I'm good, man. All right, Buana, finish your thought, please, so that uh, we could go to the next prompt. Okay, maybe maybe Buana didn't get his sound together yet. Uh, good discussion. Um, I, can hear, I can hear you. I just, I yeah, I just don't have the best connection right now, so I'm in and out. So just bear with me. Bear with me. Yeah. Okay, so last word on this, Trigger Happy 262 Plus says, Russia and China, you could say, are regional powers that are semi-peripheral. The world is largely still unipolar. Um, what we'll do, we'll go to shooter brief topic number two. Hopefully, we'll get one of full support in the next prompt. This is a Sankofa prompt, and I want to want to try to bring these types of prompts every week. Some Something that we... We go back and we look at something that's traditionally African, and we try to bring it back either in practice uh, or at the very least in memory. 